Welcome to another lively edition of the Deadly Experiment, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages. We appreciate your patronage, your watching this program. I know many do who certainly do not come forward and say that they do, but in all walks of life here in Rhode Island and those who watch us on our YouTube channel, The Deadly Experiment, can uh, partake of the elements that we bring forth to you. We're only messengers of the Father, and all we intend to do is bring His children to an understanding of what will befall them in these last days. And make no mistake about it, folks, we are in the days of the end, the days the prophet spoke of, the days the Lord Jesus himself witnessed to with his apostles and all of his servants throughout the generations that sprang forth from that time of 2,000 years ago. Jesus warned us that certain signs would be evident in the last days, and one in particular would be what he referred to in Matthew 24 would be the budding of the bad fig tree, that is the tree of death planted in Jerusalem or Jerusalem in that final generation. That would be the entity known as the so-called regathering of Israel. And that would mark a generation of time in which the whole world would be entranced in a series of events that would culminate in his coming after the false Jesus makes his appearance himself. You see, folks, right now, we are in a time of great turmoil. The American public, a great large segment of them, the so-called silent majority, the middle class, were attracted to Donald Trump's campaign as I saw it coming about seven months ago. And I could see a hidden hand, if you will, a hand guiding America to a land uh, that would uh, somehow change course from the eight years previous under Obama and uh, the eight years that were previous under W, the Bush family. So we have a new, whole new scenario now in America today. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is that all of these years of turmoil and wars and torture and, and uh, uh, disruption of American freedom, the spy network through the Department of Homeland Security, the police state in America rising, torture continuing from the Bush administration to Obama, all of that was indeed called a change. So eight years before this previous election this past year, we were told that there would be change from the Bush years, and there was. We have pocket change now, you see. America has not changed course. America is heading down that path to destruction. But it veers to the left and it veers to the right. So that Obama continued down the road to the left and then, with the uh, selection of Donald Trump, we have a veering over to the right. But where are we going? The same direction. We're headed toward a self-destruction of our people and our nation. All of the signs are evident. The economic situation has never been as bad. The financial collapse is imminent worldwide now, not just in America. The paper aristocracy, no more gold backing your dollar. There's no more absolute value to anything. It is printing of paper, debt. The debt ratio has gone up tremendously of individuals, of governments since the last six months. And it must burst, that balloon must must burst. We have more militancy on the foreign field now. Interventionism as never before being talked about. And why? Because the same people that ran the Obama administration are running the Trump administration. It matters not. It matters not. You understand? What difference does it make? when you have the same invisible government ruling over America, and that is borne out in this book, the Bible, in Bible prophecy, that we in the last days will see the destruction of our nation, of our land that is known as the New Jerusalem in the Old Covenant and in the New as well. 
America will be supplanted and taken over by aliens. It will be totally broken up into segments. And didn't you just see that some time ago with the circus clowns coming from Washington, the four so-called senators and representatives meeting with a pre-selected organized group that was funded in part by the Soros campaign, George Soros Schwartz, who is known as the currency wrecker and nation wrecker of the world. He was a European Jew who came from Hungary and amassed a fortune, millions upon millions into billions, betting on the collapse of currencies of nations. Uh, he is a typical, uh, what you would call a scatamooch in so many words. He's one who's a, a robber baron of currencies and nations. And yet he has obviously financed much of the opposition to Trump's stated goals. Now, at the same time, you need to look at who and what survives and surrounds this whole administration. Different names to be sure, but some of the names are not so different. Josh Bolton is one example of a hardline neocon from the Bush administration. Others are as well, the Millers and people of that ilk we have seen creep back in from Goldman Sachs, the financial world, all of the people that brought about the meltdown that we experienced in the Bush candidacy and administration, which came to an end in 2008 of the same people, essentially, that are taking us down to the final collapse. Steve Mnuchin was, in fact, from Goldman Sachs. He just confirmed by the Senate. Almost all of the appointees, some of them good by Trump to certain posts, have been confirmed by this Congress. And yet there is not happiness in the land. Why is that, folks? Why is it America is going through what one Russian analyst said over a decade ago that America would experience? And that is a breaking apart a dissolution, if you will, of these United States, breaking away geographically, politically, economically, class warfare, all of the division that is taking place in America now was in fact foreseen by many analysts going back 10 to 15 years ago. And we were predicting it from the word of God. The prophet, the prophet Daniel saw what would befall his people in America and Europe in the last days, friends, he foresaw this beast system arising that would take the entire planet, the eighth and final political beast system spoken of by Daniel and recorded in the book of Revelation. Beast meaning a power system, a power grid that would be an inter international system of control politically, a one world government scenario, if you will. Just imagine that. Imagine what that means. It means the loss of sovereignty of your nation. It means the loss of borders and boundaries while we're being told we're going to build a wall. All that has done is invigorate the George Soros plan for creating a mass conflict of and clash of cultures in America. What is happening before us today? We're seeing that, aren't we? We're seeing litigation. We're seeing so-called Muslim bans that are being, uh, uh, you know, proposed and then reproposed and struck down by the courts. What we're witnessing now is the result of 90 years of American interventionism in foreign affairs now coming back to haunt us. We didn't listen to our forefathers. We didn't pay attention to George Washington, who in his farewell address told us to beware of foreign allegiances and to stay out of alliances with others. Economic freedom, yes. Trade, yes. Political exchange, yes. But no interlocking relationship or involvement in chasing demons around the world, waging war for the benefit of the banks and the bankers like Soros and Rothschild's banking system. He warned us, and we didn't heed because we were seduced. Just as Eve was seduced in the book of Genesis, 
chapter 3 and in verse 16, where we read about this seduction was a whole seduction, body, mind, and soul. And it was in the genitalia that she was seduced by Satan, who was not a serpent slithering down a tree branch, but in fact a being with a genitalia in order to impregnate Eve. And from that came a child, Cain. And then she continued on in labor, it says in the scriptures, and bore Abel. Now, Cain means possess, the possessor. And Cain, as he grew, took his brother in the field and then slaughtered him. He murdered his brother Abel. And that seed line of Abel from Adam, who was the father of Abel, but not the father of Cain, you understand? Satan was the father of Cain. That seed line of Abel was cut off. There were no other children until 130 years later when Seth was born. And now you have two seed lines, one Adamic, that is one from God, and the other Satanic, the other one from Cain. So from Cain came Edom and Esau, whom God said he hated in thy belly of Rebekah his mother, and the other, Jacob, Israel, whom God said he loved. Why? How can you hate a baby in a womb? Because that baby and the other baby were also in evidence in the earth and heaven age that existed before this heaven and earth age. See, if you don't believe in the three world ages that God sets forth in his word, then you don't believe the word of God. There's no reason in the world why God would hate a baby in the womb unless that baby was part of a seed line that existed in this earth in a different age before this earth was recreated, as it says in Genesis 1-2. Then you'll understand that God hated that whole seed line because that seed line separated from him and went with Satan. The other seed line, the seed line of Adam and Noah and Jacob, Israel, went in another direction, the opposite direction. As we'll show you on the screen, you'll get an idea of that serpent seed line and God's seed line. See, if you don't believe that, then fine. You don't have any, anything to worry about. Just continue to go on scratching your wooden head saying, what is befalling America today? Who is behind this collapse? Well, in just a moment, we're going to show you the names of the people that were preparing Donald Trump to come into the White House and then to rule that White House and this cabinet, this government that he supposedly has appointed of his own volition and see how they are working within to bring about their total Talmudic rule over America. The seed line of Cain, the Cainites, call themselves today modern Jewry. I didn't say it. God said it in his word. Jesus said it in the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verses 39 to 44. You can read it for yourself. Right now, I would like to give you an example of what we're talking about, how Satan's children would rule America in the very last days, bringing about this great divide that we see now unfolding around us. The divide between the haves and the have-nots, between the pro-war and the pro-peace crowd, between the gimmies and the takies, and all that lies in between. America is dissolving, not unifying, but dissolving before our very eyes. I want you to listen to and watch the evidence that we're going to present on the screen right now of the vast number of Kenites, as we've just said, who rule and influence and control and handle this administration. And right now, I think we are going to go to that presentation. When we come back, a short commentary and then the next short video on what happened during the World War II era in America when President Franklin Roosevelt essentially created a police state in America for Japanese Americans. That is something that you need to prepare for in the coming days when all economic and political normalcy is shattered. Right now, let's take a look at this video as to who and what rules and influences this entire administration. 
Michael Aboud, Communications Coordinator, Donald J. Trump for President, Sephardic Jew. Paul Eschleitner, Chairman, Supervisory Board, Deutsche Bank, Donald Trump's largest lender, Ashkenazi Jew. Miriam Adelson, Endorser, Donald J. Trump for President, Donor, Future 45 PAC, Finance Vice Chairman, Trump Presidential Inaugural Committee, Ashkenazi Jew. Sheldon Adelson, Endorser, Donald J. Trump for President, Donor, Future 45 PAC, Finance Vice Chairman, Trump Presidential Inaugural Committee, Ashkenazi Jew. Paul Atkins, Member, President Trump's Strategic and Policy Forum, Ashkenazi Jew. Brian Ballard, Finance Vice Chairman, Trump Presidential Inaugural Committee, Ashkenazi Jew. Elliot Broidy, Vice Chairman, Trump Victory Committee, Finance Vice Chairman, Trump Presidential Inaugural Committee, Ashkenazi Jew. Safra Katz, Executive Committee Member, Trump Presidential Transition Team, Ashkenazi Jew. Michael Cohen, Executive Vice President and Special Counsel, The Trump Organization, Ashkenazi Jew. Director, United States National Economic Council, Ashkenazi Jew. Delos Cosgrove, Member, President Trump's Strategic and Policy Forum, Ashkenazi Jew. Gil Dezer, President, Trump Desert Development, Ashkenazi Jew. Michael Dezer, Founder, Trump Desert Development, Ashkenazi Jew. Louis Eisenberg, Chairman, Trump Victory Committee, Finance Co-Chairman, Trump Presidential Inaugural Committee, Ashkenazi Jew. Boris Epstein, Senior Advisor, Donald J. Trump for President, Ashkenazi Jew. Steven Feinberg, Donor, Trump Victory Fund, Member, Trump Economic Advisory Council, Ashkenazi Jew. Lawrence Fink, Member, President Trump's Strategic and Policy Forum, Ashkenazi Jew. Alan Fishman, Chairman, Ladder Capital, Donald Trump's Second Largest Lender, Ashkenazi Jew. Chairman, Ladder Capital, Donald Trump's Second Largest Lender, Ashkenazi Jew. David Friedman, Co-Chairman, Israel Advisory Committee for Donald Trump, United States Ambassador to Israel, Ashkenazi Jew. Samuel Fox, Vice Chairman, Trump Victory Committee, Ashkenazi Jew. Alan Barton, Executive Vice President and General Counsel, The Trump Organization, Ashkenazi Jew. Bruce Gelb, Endorser, Donald J. Trump for President, Ashkenazi Jew. Michael Glasner, Deputy Campaign Manager and National Political Director, Donald J. Trump for President. Special Advisor for Operations, Trump Presidential Transition Team, Ashkenazi Jew. Executive Vice President of Strategic Development, The Trump Organization, Ashkenazi Jew. Jason Greenblatt, Executive Vice President and Chief Legal Officer, The Trump Organization, Co-Chairman, Israel Advisory Committee for Donald J. Trump, President Trump's Special Representative for International Negotiations, Ashkenazi Jew. Vincent Harris, Former Digital Strategy Manager, Donald J. Trump for President, Ashkenazi Jew. Thomas Hicks, Senior, Finance Vice Chairman, Trump Presidential Inaugural Committee, Ashkenazi Jew. Carl Akan, Endorser, Donald J. Trump for President, Special Advisor to the President for Regulatory Reform. Ashkenazi Jew. Gail Akan, Finance Vice Chairman, Trump Presidential Inaugural Committee, Ashkenazi Jew. Robert Eager, Member, President Trump's Strategic and Policy Forum, Ashkenazi Jew. Travis Kalinick, Member, President Trump's Strategic and Policy Forum, Ashkenazi Jew. Kirk Calico, Donor, Trump Victory Fund, Ashkenazi Jew. Daniel Kowalski, Deputy Policy Director, Donald J. Trump for President, Member, Trump Economic Advisory Council, Ashkenazi Jew. Charles Kushner, Endorser, Donald J. Trump for President, Donor, Make America Great Again PAC, Ashkenazi Jew. Kushner, Senior Advisor, Donald J. Trump for President, Executive Committee Member, Trump Presidential Transition Team, Ashkenazi Jew. Yael Kushner, Ivanka Trump, Executive Vice President, the Trump Organization, Senior Advisor, Donald J. Trump for President, Executive Committee Member, Trump Presidential Transition Team, Orthodox Jewish Convert. Bennett LeBeau, Donor, Trump Victory Fund, Ashkenazi Jew. Richard Lesser, Member, President Trump's Strategic and Policy Forum, Ashkenazi Jew. Ronald Lieberman, Executive Vice President of Management and Development, the Trump Organization, Ashkenazi Jew. Howard Lorber, Donor, Trump Victory Fund, Member, Trump Economic Advisory Council, Ashkenazi Jew. David Malpass, Member, Trump Economic Advisory Council, Ashkenazi Jew. Douglas Manchester, Donor, Make America Great Again PAC, Ashkenazi Jew. Bernard Marcus, Endorser, Donald J. Trump for President, Donor, Rebuilding America Now PAC, Donor, Make America Number One PAC, Ashkenazi Jew. Rebecca Mercer, Donor, Make America Number One PAC, Executive Committee Member, Trump Presidential Transition Team, Ashkenazi Jew. Robert Mercer, Donor, Make America Number One PAC, Ashkenazi Jew. Amanda Miller, Vice President of Marketing, the Trump Organization, Ashkenazi Jew. Eli Miller, Chief Operating Officer, Donald J. Trump for President, Ashkenazi Jew. Jason Miller, Senior Communications Advisor, Donald J. Trump for President, Communications Director, Trump Presidential Transition Team, Communications Director and Assistant to the President, the White House, Ashkenazi Jew. Stephen Miller, National Policy Director, Donald J. Trump for President, National Policy Director, Trump Presidential Transition Team, Senior Advisor to the President for Policy, the White House, Ashkenazi Jew. Steven Mnuchin, Donor, Trump Victory Fund, Member, Trump Economic Advisory Council, National Finance Chairman, Donald J. Trump for President, Executive Committee Member, Trump Presidential Transition Team, Secretary, United States Department of Treasury, Ashkenazi Jew. Elon Musk, Member, President Trump's Strategic and Policy Forum, Ashkenazi Jew. Samuel Noonberg, Former Policy Advisor, Donald J. Trump for President, Ashkenazi Jew. 
David Orwitz, Senior Vice President of Acquisitions and Development, the Trump Organization, Ashkenazi Jew. Jeffrey Palmer, Donor, Rebuilding America Now PAC, Ashkenazi Jew. Paulson, Donor, Trump Victory Fund, Member, Trump Economic Advisory Council, Ashkenazi Jew. Laura Perlmutter, Donor, Trump Victory Fund, Finance Vice Chairman, Trump Presidential Inaugural Committee, Ashkenazi Jew. Andrew Puzder, Secretary, United States Department of Labor, Ashkenazi Jew. Stuart Rauer, Endorser, Donald J. Trump for President, Ashkenazi Jew. Richard Roberts, Vice Chairman, Israel Advisory Committee for Donald Trump, Ashkenazi Jew. George Ross, Executive Vice President and Senior Counsel, The Trump Organization, Ashkenazi Jew. Wilbur Ross Jr., billionaire investor and former Senior Managing Director of Rothschild Incorporated for 25 years, Secretary of Commerce, Donor, Trump Victory Fund, Member, Trump Economic Advisory Council, Secretary, United States Department of Commerce, Ashkenazi Jew. Stephen Roth, Donor, Trump Victory Fund, Member, Trump Economic Advisory Council, Ashkenazi Jew. Keith Schiller, Director of Security, The Trump Organization, Ashkenazi Jew. Stephen Schwartzman, Chairman, President Trump's Strategic and Policy Forum, Ashkenazi Jew. Melvin Sembler, Vice Chairman, Trump Victory Committee, Finance Vice Chairman, Trump Presidential Inaugural Committee, Ashkenazi Jew. Yaakov Shahem, Endorser, Donald J. Trump for President, Donor, Trump Victory Fund, Ashkenazi Jew. Mark Short, Senior Advisor to Vice President-Elect, Trump Presidential Transition Team, Ashkenazi Jew. Peter Thiel, Endorser, Donald J. Trump for President, Donor, Trump Victory Fund, Donor, Rebuilding America Now PAC, Donor, Make America Number One PAC, Executive Committee Member, Trump Presidential Transition Team, Ashkenazi Jew. Lara Trump, Endorser, Donald J. Trump for President, Ashkenazi Jew. Vanessa Trump, Endorser, Donald J. Trump for President, Ashkenazi Jew. Kevin Warsh, Member, President Trump's Strategic and Policy Forum, Ashkenazi Jew. Mark Weinberger, Member, President Trump's Strategic and Policy Forum, Ashkenazi Jew. Ronald Weiser, Vice Chairman, Trump Victory Committee, Finance Vice Chairman, Trump Presidential Inaugural Committee, Ashkenazi Jew. Andrew Weiss, Executive Vice President, the Trump Organization, Ashkenazi Jew. Alan Weisselberg, Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer, the Trump Organization, Ashkenazi Jew. Lawrence Weitzner, Advisor, Donald J. Trump for President, Ashkenazi Jew. Stephen Whitkoff, Donor, Trump Victory Fund, Ashkenazi Jew. Stephen Wynn, Financial Vice Chairman, Trump Presidential Inaugural Committee, Ashkenazi Jew. Richard Lefrak, Donor, Trump Victory Fund, Ashkenazi Jew. Daniel Jurgen, member, President Trump's Strategic and Policy Forum, Ashkenazi Jew. Okay, folks, now you see the evidence is overwhelming as to what I've been talking about all these years on this program and today on this program as to who and what is staffing the Trump administration. Many thought it was an anti-New World Order administration, and it is most definitely not. You can see the invisible hand of the Kenites working their way into the political system. Talk about Russian hacking and Russian influence peddling. <laughs> if it wasn't so tragic, it would be funny. Because what we have now is a takeover from within. This is how the Kenites have always worked. They did it in Germany in the 1930s when Hitler accepted money from the Jewish banks, came into power, and 150,000 Jews actually worked for the government of Hitler. This is not a fantasy, this is reality. They were volunteers, not conscripts. They weren't slaves. My friends, the Kenites work from within and without to destroy a people and a government. And they, the seed line of Cain, the seed line of Edom and Esau, now waging its final war against Jacob Israel, the true Israelite people of the Bible, which are here in America today, the 10 lost tribes of Israel. All right. Folks, the next segment on this program will show you what happens when a people become ungovernable. That was during the World War II era when Japanese Americans, now American citizens, were dispossessed of their land, their property, their holdings, and even their families separated and taken and put in camps. These were for their own protection, mind you. That's what happened during World War II. And is it going to happen again when all order breaks down? I think so, unfortunately. Be prepared. Right now, watch this segment. In 1942, the United States government forcibly relocated over 112,000 Japanese nationals and Japanese Americans to remote housing facilities called war relocation camps for the purpose of detainment, re-education, and forced labor. Of those interned, 62% were United States citizens. President Franklin Roosevelt authorized the internment with Executive Order 9066, allowing military commanders to designate military areas as exclusion zones. This power was then used to declare the entire Pacific coast as an exclusion zone. 
forbidding people of Japanese descent to live within these areas, unless, of course, they were held in war relocation camps. In 1944, the Supreme Court upheld the constitutionality of these exclusion zones, and in 1945, after two and a half long years of imprisonment, the interns were finally released. The United States government issued no formal apologies, but did present each former inmate with exactly $25 in cash and a train ticket home, if they were lucky enough to still have one. Forty-three years later, in 1988, President Ronald Reagan would sign a bill that formally apologized for the internment of Japanese Americans on behalf of the United States government, and finally granted reparations to survivors. The language of the bill stated that government actions of the 1940s internments were based upon three criteria, racial prejudice, wartime hysteria, and a failure of political leadership. So what is most important in this bill has less to do with property than with honor. For here, we admit a wrong. Here, we reaffirm our commitment as a nation to equal justice under the law. In 2001, following the attacks of September the 11th, our government again went into open roundup mode, detaining and imprisoning thousands of United States citizens again seemingly based upon the same three criteria used to intern Japanese Americans race prejudice, war hysteria, and a failure of political leadership. Let there be no argument. The United States government has put its own citizens in detention centers. The justifications for doing so range from personal prejudices based upon political and religious grounds to wartime frenzies and fears of future terrorist attacks. In a time of great crisis, the impossible becomes possible. Is it possible that internment camps are being built in the United States today? Is it possible that history will repeat itself? my friend, so now you see it's happened before in America. It's not the first time that Americans of Japanese descent, Italian descent, by the way, and German descent were found to be dissidents or seditionists or potential problems in America under the Roosevelt administration. They were put into camps for their own good. These, these camps for dissidents and for those who were dispossessed of their holdings and their property because they were considered to be security risks, we're told, they were set aside from the rest of our society. When it comes to a total breakdown of order in America, a collapse of the economic system, the welfare checks don't come, the, the checks do not come, the pension checks, all of that will happen. When it happens, you know what's going to take place. The Pentagon does too because it has a plan in place. We'll talk about that in the days and weeks to come, God willing. Folks, get into the Word of God Get close to God because He is going to be your only refuge, Yeshua Messiah. Right now, Rick Adams saying thank you for watching. Think about what's being told to you. And goodbye, and Yahweh bless His elect.